Ports are maritime commercial facilities usually located on a coast or shore that contains one or more harbours where ships can dock and transfer cargo as well as people. Ports constitute a major component of the global transportation sector and are linked to the expanding world economy. In other words, ports are a means of integration into the global economic system. As the WTO agreement since the 1980s lifted several pre-existing international trade barriers, manufacturers all over the world vertically disintegrated their production systems into geographically dispersed and flexibly organised supply chain systems. The international trade regime began allowing manufacturers to relocate their production and assemble plants to more cost-efficient locations in developing economies. I'm your host Kasim, welcome to another KJ vid. And in this video, we will discuss the geopolitics of ports. Ports have been at the hearts of commerce for centuries, and they only kept gaining more and more significance. Before the invention of aeroplanes, sea had been the main mode of transport for settlers, travellers and migrants for centuries. They played important roles in the industrial revolutions and act as a catalyst to industrialization. Whilst early ports were mostly used as harbours, today they are more often referred to multimodal distribution hubs, having transport links using sea, river, canal, road, rail and air routes. Modern and successful ports tend to be located in areas with close access to an active hinterland such as the London Gateway. The hinterland is the land or district behind a coast or the shoreline of a river. In terms of maritime trade, the word is applied to the inland region lying behind a port, claimed by the state that owns the coast. To be more precise, the hinterland of a port is the area from which goods are delivered to that port. Deep sea ports or deep water ports are different from regular ports. These are ports that are capable of accommodating large heavy loaded ships such as the Panamax ship or even larger ships that may require the water to be at least 30 feet deep or more, while regular ports are usually not more than 20 feet deep. A Panamax ship is determined by the dimensions of the Panama Canal's lock chambers. Ports operate as important gateways for facilitating international trade and are regarded as major accelerators of local economic development in the fast globalizing world. There are a number of significant socio-economic impacts of ports. Firstly, ports boost economic development. Considered as important links of hinterlands to points overseas, ports enable transfer of goods to and from hinterland. They are significant contributors to a country's economy by facilitating an increasing international trade with regions that are separated by large water bodies. The ease of transfer results in increased exports which boosts industrialization whilst an increase in imports provides consumers with products with competitive rates and more choices. Secondly, ports accelerate economic integration. A rapid rise in utilisation of ports to transfer goods have resulted in more competitive prices for transportation, accelerating globalisation. Thirdly, ports assist in infrastructure development. International trade and the increasing use of ports leads to an increase in economic activity between hinterland and ports which causes development of key infrastructure such as roads and railways as well as inland waterways. This is a win-win situation for the country in question because an increase in foreign trade leads to better infrastructure for citizens. Ports have a great impact on employment. There are direct employment increases when there are port related activities. As ports also have an impact on industrialization they also affect indirect employment, for example in the service industry such as banking and insurance. Ports also have a significant impact on development. As more and more countries in the West rely on low-cost developing countries for manufactured goods such as textile, leather and ready-made garments, resulting in the creation of more and more jobs and opportunities for people in fast-growing developing countries. Ports also have an impact on the development of cities, Many of the major cities all around the world are port cities where economic activities are high that include logistics, banking, finance and insurance. These activities play a crucial part in the development of cities. Finally, there is also an environmental impact of ports. 
Maritime transportation is more climate and environmentally friendly than other modes of transportation such as roads and railways. Due to having much lower emissions, countries like Norway have stressed the benefits of shifting transport from road to sea in order to tackle climate change. Ports have turned out to be increasingly important for countries around the globe over the past couple of centuries. Today they are providing vital for some of the fastest growing economies in the world, as well as some of the developed nations who also rely much on international trade. Although the largest growth of port development is in Asia, which has some of the largest and busiest ports in the world, such as the port of Shanghai in China and the port of Singapore, there are also several other major ports spread out in other parts of the world. Some of the major ports worth mentioning are as follows. The port of Shanghai is the busiest port in the world in terms of cargo tonnage and compromises a deep sea port as well as a river port. It covers a staggering 3,600 square meters of area at the mouth of the Yangtze River. This port has been vital in accelerating China's economic growth which led them to top Japan to be the second largest economy in the world, only behind the United States. Open for trade in 1842, the port can handle more than 2,000 container ships on a monthly basis, constituting nearly a quarter of all outgoing shipments in entire China. The port of Singapore is the second busiest port in the world in terms of cargo tonnage. Ranked the top maritime capital of the world for three consecutive years since 2015, it also transships one-fifth of the entire world's shipping containers, whilst also shipping half of the world's annual supply of crude oil. The port of Singapore is a key port for ships flowing through the Strait of Malacca, and has over 200 cranes to deal with the constant flow of traffic. The port of Rotterdam located in the second largest city of the Netherlands, happens to be the largest port in Europe. During the Second World War, the city centre and a third of the port's facilities were completely destroyed by the Germans, but were soon rebuilt as a city of modern bold architecture with a fully functioning port. The amount of sea transported goods passing through Rotterdam's harbour and its outport, Europort, is the largest in the world in terms of capacity with much of its cargoes consisting of crude oil or petroleum products. The harbour territories were expanded by the construction of Europort, which is a gateway Europe complex. It is also one of the largest grain and general cargo harbours in the continent, acting as a major transshipment port for inland Europe, with tens of thousands of Rhine River barges using its facilities. Rotterdam's economy is completely based on shipping, and since the late 1940s, Rotterdam's oil processing or petrochemical industry has grown in significance. Jebel Ali is located in the United Arab Emirates and is the world's ninth busiest port, the largest man-made harbour and also the busiest port in the Middle East. It handles traffic coming through the Strait of Hormuz and the Persian Gulf, while serving as a crucial port for the transportation of crude oil. Although relatively new, Having been built in the 1970s, it has grown fast to be a crucial global player in the shipping trade. The Port of Los Angeles, located in California, is the largest port in all of the North and South Americas and amongst the top 10 busiest worldwide. It handles ships coming from the major ports in Asia with its 270 deep water berths and 113 miles of rail. Its major trading partners are China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and Vietnam. The port of Los Angeles plays a significant role in the economy of the state of California, which fascinatingly happens to be the fifth largest economy in the world, only trailing the economies of Germany, Japan, China and the economy of the United States as a whole and ahead of the United Kingdom. The port of Ambali is the largest port in Turkey and is a historically significant port despite being ranked only the 48th internationally in terms of size. For centuries it has played a major role in shipping being one of the oldest ports in maritime history. Ambali has access to the Sea of Marmara, the Golden Horn, the Black Sea, all of which wrap around Istanbul, a convergence that helped grow shipping worldwide and import European characteristics all over the world. Istanbul has always been a major strategic gateway at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, 
with China recently investing a billion dollars for controlling the stake in Comport Terminal, which is a modern container facility in the Ambali port complex. International shipping expert and ITF administrator Olaf Merck mentioned four keys for ports of the future – size, speed, smart and sustainability. As trade increases, ships are getting bigger and bigger and the size of the ports would be crucial to accommodate and facilitate trade. Also important is fast movement which can be helped by being smart, i.e. by embracing technological advancement, which can be helped by embracing smart technology. And as climate change is fast becoming a key issue worldwide, it is important for shipping to go green. Ports are becoming more important than ever before for international trade and they will need to cater to the ever-changing world. Ports are vital for fast-growing economies all over the globe and several have already taken initiatives or are about to on the development of their ports in order to boost their economies. For the major countries in South and Southeast Asia and East Asia for example, a huge majority of trade by volume as well as by value take place via sea trade and they must continuously keep working to maintain this port-led development. Respectively, we can also expect more geopolitical tension by the neighbouring regions surrounding each port, which we will talk about separately in future videos. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ vid. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out the important links in the description. Also be sure to leave your comments and questions and we'll try our best to answer them. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.